We now have a basic understanding of our schemas, and it's time we apply that knowledge towards querying our I model. So let's head on over to the I model console. Now, the I model console uses EC SQL to write queries against the I model. Now, EC SQL is based on SQL, so it's very similar language. So let's do a select star from. The way we specify tables in EC SQL is by using the schema.class name. So heading back to the schema explorer, in this case for our smart devices, this is the schema name and this is the class name. So we can copy this and paste it right here. And this gives us our first query to get a list of all our smart devices. So you can see we have 27 smart devices in this model. Here is the, the list. We have unique IDs for them and a host of other properties. We got uh, the code spec, the user label, uh, but the properties that we care about are down here somewhere, smart device ID and smart device type. Now this is a lot of data. We don't really care about all these details, so we can improve our query to just get the properties that we need. Here's an important console feature. To get the last query we typed, we can just go on history and click on the last query. And over here we can specify the property names. So we want the EC instance ID, we want the smart device ID, and also the smart device type. As you can see, we have autocomplete here. So the I model console actually has an understanding of the schemas and suggests the properties or the classes that you're looking for. Okay, so now we have a list of our properties, press enter, and this gives us a more refined result. We have uh, our unique IDs, the smart device ID, and the smart device type. This is essentially the information that we're gonna be using when we work with our smart devices in this course. Now this ID that you see here, the EC instance ID, this is a unique ID for any element inside an I model. It could be a geometric element, it could be a 2D element, it could be even an informational element. Any element is going to have this unique ID. This is the primary key for iModel elements. In the case of 3D elements, like the smart devices that we have in this model, this ID can be used to zoom into that element or highlight it, and we'll see an application of that later in this course. Now, one more thing I want to show you is that uh, we saw how Biz is uh, based on a hierarchy. So we have the smart device class, but this is based on the geometric element 3D class. So we can actually query the geometric element 3D and get properties for one of these elements from that particular class. So let's do select star from, paste our schema and class name, and we'll add a where clause, EC instance ID is equal to, we'll just, uh, let's go with the bed, copy that, paste, press enter. You'll see we still get a result back. Now what this shows is that the same element can be represented using multiple classes. Since the smart device inherits from geometric element 3D, we can actually get geometric element 3D properties for that element as well. The caveat here is that we won't see the smart device ID and type properties that belong to the smart device class. So in order to get all the properties for this element, we need to query its most specific class. So do keep that in mind that anytime you're looking for properties, make sure that it is contained within the class and schema that you're querying for. Before we wrap up this video, I do want to show one more console feature, which is uh, doing .ec SQL. This gives us a list of uh, some popular queries that you can execute. For example, you can get a list of all the schema names. So this is just a nifty feature to look out for. One more feature is that you can share your query results with others. So you can either copy a link and share it with another user. You just have to make sure that user is added to this project. Or you can also share by exporting to an Excel file. At this point, we're going to wrap up the data section for this course. We understand the IMODEL console, the schema explorer, and also how data is organized within Biz. Now let's apply this knowledge to actually fulfilling our use case. In the next chapter, we're going to start writing some code. I'll see you then.